So something really cool just happened on Twitter, specifically on the math Twitter blogosphere, and I wanted to share it. And if you teach math or work with math, there's a great reason to get onto Twitter and check this kind of stuff out. So this all begins when Mark Chubb throws out this image and he says, create a symmetrical image worth 100. He's using Cuisinaire rods here. Uh, each of those rods have a value from one to 10 based on how long they are. So if students are used to those, you you get accustomed to them having a different values, different numbers associated to them. He's claiming this one is 100. And it's a great challenge because it's something that students can both count, can create themselves, but also try to count and try to be strategic about counting. Very interesting problem. There's a little multiplication problem wrapped up in there. Super cool. And very soon after this, uh, someone takes up that challenge, and Simon Gregg responds, okay, I've got one. How could you count these? I love the hashtag, not quite symmetrical. It's almost there, but if you take it really seriously, it's not quite symmetrical. Uh, not even quite rotationally symmetrical. Super close. Um, but really interesting, kind of a different take on it. So right away, just that's the kind of response we get. We have an idea. Someone responds and builds on that idea, which is awesome. Um, and then what happens next is someone else, John Golden, responds by taking it to another level and actually says, okay, if this 100 is actually the third entry in a pattern, how many, like if that's 100 is the third in a pattern, he creates the first and second and says how many are going to be in the first, second, third, fourth, etc., cetera, nth, um, following a structure developed by Fon Nguyen called visual patterns. So tying this in, building, getting this even further. Um, and what's great is he kind of gets addicted to doing these and he starts making them in all sorts of different ways and playing around with it, uh, even to the point where he can't stop. So, I mean, he stops. But, uh, so in response to that, Simon Gregg actually goes out and builds the things and puts this new question forward about, well, what would the steps negative five to negative one like? look like. He's built steps zero to step five. What about the negative steps? Does that even make sense? And right away, someone chimes in. Sarah Kamal chimes in and says, wait a minute, what's going on with step zero? I'm not following your logic. Why did those red blocks come back? They had disappeared. Some Greg, delighted to be asked, explains thinking. They're going back and forth. Um, and then, th and there's a bunch more to this conversation. There's graphs and all sorts of things. But there's a great moment at the end where if all of this is teachers pushing each other to think more deeply and provide their students deeper experiences, uh, Simon Gregg really has what I think is the coup de grace here, where he says, what John did was really cool. Could we ask students to do that? That is the part of saying, here's one in a pattern. What could come before it? How could we make a pattern that has that as one of its steps and actually start thinking about natural and possibly really strange and creative ways to build patterns and that thinking to go from here's a cool problem to actually deepening our students experiences having our own experiences so we'll know what students might see and be prepared for different ways they may go through it and then also breaking the experience down to that level where we're trying to think about how to put as much of it in the students hands as possible give them as much control, as much richness of the experience as possible. I just thought that was really exciting and kind of a great advertisement for the math Twitter blogosphere. So uh, if you do anything with Cuisinaire rods, use all this. This is super cool stuff. And if you don't and don't want to, well, you should because they're awesome. But uh, I think that idea of just that back and forth between teachers and how teachers make each other better, pretty inspiring for me.